Welcome to the Northern BC Archives and Special Collections at the University of Northern BC. Today, I will provide a basic introduction to the Northern BC Archives and how to access our holdings. Archives are not as well known as libraries or museums, so I will first outline what archives are and what archivists do. I will then give you a virtual tour of the Northern BC Archives and finally show the various ways to access our collections. What are archives? Archives are the documentary byproduct of human activity retained for their long-term value. They are contemporary records created by individuals and organizations as they go about their business and therefore provide a direct window on past events. They come in a wide range of formats, including written, photographic, moving image, sound, digital, and analog. Archives are held by public and private institutions and individuals around the world. These institutions are themselves called archives, so the word has multiple meanings. The value we place on archival records is not a monetary value, but an intrinsic value. As individuals, the value we place on our records can be difficult to define. Some records have legal value, such as our birth certificates or proof of immigration status or citizenship. Others have sentimental value, such as family photographs. Ephemeral records, such as grocery lists or tickets, are only valuable to us for a short time. Archivists appraise the intrinsic value of archival materials, assessing their research value, uniqueness, and how well they provide a direct window to past events. What are archival materials? Archival materials include unpublished materials, such as unpublished manuscripts, photographs, architectural drawings, letters, administrative records, original film recordings, and birth, marriage, and death certificates, which are usually found at a provincial archives. Non-archival materials include published materials, such as books, newsletters, newspapers, magazines, and feature films, which you can all find in a library whereas museums have artifacts and clothing or textiles. These are general guidelines, but there are plenty of exceptions. The Northern BC Archives has all of the above non-archival materials in our archival collections. Why? Because of how archives are organized. Unlike libraries, archives do not focus on acquiring individual items, but rather the entire body of records as a whole, of a person or organization to preserve the context. For example, a letter accompanying a gift, let's say a book, the letter is an archival record, it is unique and unpublished, but the book is a non-archival record. That is, it is published and not unique. There are many copies. We keep these two items together to preserve their context. Separating them would damage their intrinsic value. The entire body of records of a person or organization is called a fond. These records were naturally accumulated by the creator, person or organization, and ideally preserved in the original order of accumulation and use. This is an ideal scenario and quite rare, but this is what we work towards. Fonds are then divided into series which usually reflect activities and then files and finally items. In contrast, a collection is artificially accumulated by the creator, like a stamp collection. These usually consist of materials in a single format, like stamps or photographs, or on a single subject, like trains. And then the Northern BC Archives has a few collections on trains. The finding aids are created by archivists as we process, arrange, and describe font and collections so their contents can be searched and specific files or items can be found and accessed. What do archivists do? In my day-to-day -day work, I rehouse, arrange, and describe archival records and create finding aids. I do basic conservation and repair and digitize, that is, scan archival materials and make them available online. I create research and subject guides and other web resources. I liaise with donors, help researchers, and do outreach, such as presentations. This photograph in the corner is a picture of the excellent Erica Hernandez-Reed, the current head of Northern BC Archives and Special Collections. All archives have a mandate describing the general scope of their collections and services. 
The mandate of the Northern BC Archives is to acquire, preserve, and provide access to materials of permanent value to the history and culture of Northern British Columbia and the institutional history and development of UNBC. What do we mean by Northern BC? That includes north up to and including BC border with Yukon Territory, south up to and including the Caribou to Colton, east up to and including the BC border with Alberta, and west up to and including Haida Gwaii. Now for a virtual tour of our spaces. This is our reading room set up for a presentation in this photo. This is where researchers can access our physical materials. The big central table is perfect for laying out various materials as seen here, especially large maps. There is also a computer workstation and scanner available for public use, though these are not pictured. The door at the back of the room leads to our vault. Archives and special collections are what we call closed stacks, meaning researchers cannot freely browse materials in the vault like they can in the library. All materials must be requested and viewed in the reading room and cannot be removed from this space. Our vault is environmentally controlled to preserve our collections. The temperature is set to around 13 or 14 degrees Celsius and we keep the lights off to prevent light damage. So it is cold and dark in here and not a place we want to work in for long periods of time. All our rehoused archival textual materials are on compact shelving to save space and in archival quality boxes. Archivists measure our textual materials in linear meters. One shelf can hold up to three bankers boxes, which are these larger blue boxes here, or eight Hollinger boxes, which are these smaller gray boxes here, measures approximately one meter. The photograph on the right shows the entire Adam Zimmerman font in the Hollinger boxes, so these gray ones, not the blue ones at the back, which is 21 meters of textual records. Our archival collections are held on one side of the vault and special collections on the other. I do not have a photo of our special collections shelving, but it resembles typical library shelving with books. Our special collections mostly consist of rare or locally published books pertaining to Northern BC and or UNBC. They also include maps and other published materials. Large formats, such as maps and plans, are stored flat in map cabinets. We keep our film and photographic materials together, and these are photos that just show our reel-to-reel -reel films. We also store the university's art collection when the pieces are not currently out on display around campus. The processing room is where we do most of our work with archival materials. Here, we rehouse it by removing it from its original cardboard boxes and folders into archival quality folders, boxes, or other housing. We remove fasteners, such as staples or paper clips, that are rusting or may rust, and adhesives, like tape, that stain and damage records. We keep various rehousing and conservation materials in here. We have a computer to record our descriptions of the materials as we work through them. The freezer is where we store materials that must be kept in cold storage. We have various digitization equipment to scan various types of formats, some of which are pictured here. Top left is a slide scanner. The top right is a flatbed scanner, which we use a lot uh, for photographs, negatives, documents, and slides. At the bottom left is a book scanner, and the bottom right is a large format scanner that we can use to scan large maps or plans or posters. We also have various audiovisual playback equipment that can be used to digitize with the right software. Digitization is very popular and essential to improve access, but there are many barriers to digitization. It is incredibly time consuming, and since time is money, it is also very expensive. To speed up digitization, we can hire student assistants. The equipment is also very expensive and needs to be replaced quite often when the technology no longer meets archival standards. Legislation prevents digitization as materials under copyright cannot be scanned and uploaded for public access without permission from the copyright holder. Canadian copyright typically lasts 50 years after the death of the author, photographer, or creator, and the copyright holder can be difficult to track down, especially when the copyright owner is an organization that no longer exists. 
Finally, we cannot always digitize everything due to privacy reasons. If records contain personal information, they must be restricted. I will now go over our web resources. Here is our web page where we include a lot of information such as our contact information. So you can email us, set up an appointment, see our hours and our physical location. We also have links to our various social media, uh, Facebook and Instagram, and we also have a YouTube channel, which is where we upload most of our audiovisual content that we digitize. We also have this sliding gallery that uh, displays new digitized materials or uh, new content that we have uploaded at the Northern BC Archives. You can browse our, our collections by format here. We also have more news listed here. Finally, you can get the contact information for our various staff. We have the Northern BC Digital Collection, which I'll go to now. This is a collection of both archival and special collections material that has been digitized and added to this database. This material can be found in the UMBC Libraries General Search. It can be found elsewhere, it does not just need to be found here. But what I really like about this resource is that you can browse by region. So you can select a region here, or you can browse by type here, or if you want to search for something specific, make sure you select Northern BC Digital Collections and type in your search query here. There is also a video at the bottom of the page that provides more search tips. But if we want to find something on Prince George, you would click on the Fraser Fort George region. And here you can see various maps and textual materials related to this region. So for instance, there's the Corliss Funeral Record and Ledger. If we click on that, it will take us to a PDF of the ledger when it loads, which can then be downloaded to your computer. There we go. Back to the home page. We have various resources up here at the top. You can find more information about us. Again, our staff, hours, location, and contact, and various social media. You can find our physical location and directions here. We go back to the home page. There's also resources. These are not materials that that are within the Northern BC Archives and Special Collections, but rather materials that we often get asked about. They're, they're high use, and so we have collected all these various resources in one spot to make it easier. So, uh, for example, Northern BC newspapers that are available online, we've organized by region, and you can find whichever newspaper you're looking for and search it there. We also have BC City directories. Not all of these are online. Some of them are, as you can see, are just available on microfilm or in print, but it gives you the locations of where to find these. Again, that's the same with the Northern BC fire insurance plans. So again, these have not, for the most part, been digitized, but we have listed have listed them and uh, give information about where they're located so you can find them. Back to the home page. 
there's the giving page. So if you or someone you know has materials that match our mandate and would like to donate, this page helps describe the process and may answer some of your questions. And finally, the other thing I would like to point out is our archives by subject. So as I described earlier, Archives are organized by creator, which is not always the easiest way to find information. So here we have organized our collections by subject or topic. So oral histories, Prince George history, natural resources, forest history, transportation, exploration and surveying, health and medicine. We also have this 1918 influenza epidemic in Prince George. It's a learning resource, so it's slightly different from the others. Women of Northern BC, First Nations and Indigenous peoples, early 20th century settlers and ghost towns, political and social history, Northern BC literary collections and cultural life, and multicultural Northern BC. So these are the various topics. I will go over the forest history guide just as an example. So uh, each of the guides look pretty similar, pretty much like this. They'll have an overview, and then there is also the sliding gallery detailing the digital collections specific to this subject. Here it will tell you, give a little bit of information about the collection and tell you what, what parts of it are available digitally. So, for example, this Elisa Lake Research Forest Fond, this is one collection that we have that is entirely digitized and it gives information about what that means. There's also a learning resource for the Elisa Lake resources and our contact information, information again. And then we've divided things by general topic. So uh, research and model forests, we have the Elisa Lake collection. Again, as things are organized by creator, there are three different fonts which relate to the Elisa Lake research forest, which makes it a bit difficult to find. However, this is why we have created these subject guides to aggregate all this information in one spot. We've got the Elisa Lake Research Forest Fond, which is the main fond that covers the entire history of the Elisa Lake Research Forest back from its creation in the 1920s when it was called the Elisa Lake Experimental Station and up until it was transferred over to the control of, of the Elisa Lake Research Forest Society, which is a partnership between UNBC, UBC, BC Ministry of Forests and uh, BC Ministry of Sustainable Resource Management. Because this is entirely digitized, we have a lot more information here than we would for our normal collections. So you can click on each series and see all the digital resources available there. So here is the uh, Lisa Lake Research Forest Society fall. So this is when it was transferred ownership different creator, different font. There's less information here because this hasn't entirely been digitized. There are some material that has been digitized, but not all of it. And then finally, there's the Harry Coates font. Harry Coates worked at Elisa Lake for the Elisa Lake Research Forest for a long period of time, and a lot of his records directly relate to the experiments that were conducted there on sustainable forest management. And then there's other related materials so just as an example, let's click on a random series. Let's do maps. Click on this. This takes us to our database. This is the digital finding aid for this series within this fall. You will see the materials within it. So there's textual records, architectural drawings, cartographic material, and technical drawings. There's the dates of creation. So this material ranges from 1949 to 1998 and the physical extent. So there are 22 maps along with a few 
textual materials and technical and architectural drawings. There's a scope and content, which gives you a bit of information about the contents of this series, various other information as well. So there is this sliding bar, which allows you to have a preview of the various materials. If we were to click on one, we would get the digital finding aid for that specific item. So this information is changed. We get the statement of scale. We get the date. This is an architectural drawing with annotations. There's a scope and content. And if we click on it to see the full image, this is a high quality scan. So we can even zoom in even further and see more information. And if we wanted to save this, we right click and click on save image as and a dialog box will come up and allow you to save wherever you want it to on your computer. So that is an example of an entirely digitized wall. So if we were to look at the fall level digital finding aid, we would get a lot of the same information that I have copied and, and pasted and, and reformatted here. For other collections, let's see, we've got photograph collections. Again, if you go to the full, you would have the, the sliding bar, but it only shows you the first 50. If you want to view all, click on show all and it takes you, you can see all the all the, the images. If you want to see the context of the images, that is the order in which the images were taken or placed in these albums, you might want to sort by identifier or reference code. They're the same thing in ascending order. And this puts the photographs back in their original order. Some of them are high quality scans but others are not. So if we wanted to see the full picture, this is a lower quality scan, so we don't see a large image that we can zoom in. If you want to get a high quality reproduction of an item, email us and make sure you include the reference code or identification number or accession number, all the same thing. But what it basically means is this number right here and ask us to create a high quality reproduction for you. Sometimes there is a cost involved, so we will let you know. It's usually not that expensive. And another example, there, this is an oral history collection and the archives has done an archival speaker series over the past few years. And this is a recording of the talk given by Dr. Greg Helseth, uh, who specifically talked about this collection. So if you want more information about it, I highly recommend listening to this video. But this just goes to show you that this is a place where we have aggregated and collected all the information specific to specific collections or specific topics to make it a lot easier to find information than it would be by searching our database. So let's go back to the home page. And if you want to search our database for something specific, you can either search in the search box here or click on this tab, search the archives. And this will take you to our database. Here is a video uh, describing more details on how to search our database but it has an advanced search function allowing you to put in various fields. If you can't find what you're looking for, please email us. We have a lot of experience searching through our materials. Occasionally, you'll be able to work with the archivist who actually processed the materials, so they would know a lot more about that material than we can really put into a finding aid here. So that's our web resources. 
If you are looking for something specific, or want to access our physical collections, or want to get a copy of an item or file, please email us. Contacting us through email is always the best way to access our services, as we will have a record of your request to work from and have a reliable means to contact you. If you don't hear back from us in a couple of business days, please email us again. We really want to help you. Thank you for watching and listening to this recording. Please email us if you have any questions.